Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Jeff from Math and Engineering Help Desk, and I want to uh, start a series today on some of the uh, material with the Illustrative Math Curriculum, which is a uh, open resources, open up resources uh, um, curriculum that is free to districts, and uh, we have been actually piloting a couple of the units here at our school. Uh, so today's lesson is uh, first of first of three uh, that's going to talk about similarity and sort of an overall definition of similarity between two figures. So um, the the main definition of similarity that you have most likely heard is basically that similar figures figures are similar if they can be rotated, reflected, uh, translated, and or dilated to overlap each other, okay? Something like that. That's sort of a, you know, a, a plain English definition right there. So if they're similar, you can rotate them, reflect them, translate them, and dilate them to overlap each other. So uh, we're gonna see a couple of examples of that right now. So here we have on this screen, uh, this is sort of a, one of the student-facing task statements that you would have in lesson five from unit two in the eighth grade curriculum. Uh, you have two triangles, HGE and EML. So they do have one point in common. And the goal here is to show that they can be similar. So what sequence of transformations or dilations, reflections, whatever, uh, that can take these figures onto each other? So there's a couple ways to go about this. Uh, first off, we can see that we have two uh, triangles, one smaller than the other, so clearly there's a dilation that's involved. And the best way to kind of move these onto each other is to take this point right here, point M, and make it so uh, we can move it into the other, uh, onto the other point. Let me use my other ray for that one. Uh, make it point M, point to point G, for example. So if we take all of this figure right here and move it so that it's over the other figure, um, HGE, then we can get it to be uh, at least on top of this. So it would look kind of like this, right? So here we have, this is point, uh, that's uh, line EM, excuse me. There's line EL, and then there's line uh, ML, right? So that's the triangle right there. Now, if we took all three of those and moved them over to that point right there using this translation rule right here, which is basically a uh, left four up three translation for all three of these points. All three of these points would move the same distance as you could see. This one goes up four over three. This one goes up four over three. And now we have a triangle that's mapped onto uh, this sort of a common point here. So moving that would be sort of the first step. So we can think of it as a, uh, if we want to give it numbers, translate uh, E, M, and L, negative four, three. Okay, using that rule. So basically we would take our x coordinates and subtract four and take our y coordinate and add three. Now at this point in the curriculum, when we're teaching this in a classroom, we don't necessarily quantify this translation. We kind of just describe it. And so we would say really just kind of t take point M, E, and L and sh shift them over here. So take M point G and then move those points with it. Uh, so we really wouldn't describe it using a, a, a straight up translation rule of X minus four, Y plus three, but it does kind of help to see where it's coming from and where it's going. Now the next thing we would do is we need to make this have the same size as this. And you can see clearly right here that this line is going to be parallel to this line. So these figures are definitely, uh, definitely are similar. Uh, now we just have to do a dilation to make that uh, the case. So what we're going to do here is we're going to center a dilation at point G. And we are going to use a scale factor of 2. And what that's going to do is create this dilation ray right here. And it's also going to create... Um, this dilation ray right here. And then these points are going to move along these dilation rays. And of course, since point G is the center of dilation, this point will remain the same. So what scale factor would we have to use? Well, it looks to me like the distance from this point to this point is two. So from here to here, that's a two unit distance. And we want to get it to be a four unit distance. So what scale factor would we have to do there well, we have to think the one that's going to multiply two to get four. So we would need to use a scale factor, excuse me, of two. Okay, so a couple ways to notate that. You can use the letter K. Uh, most textbooks use the letter K for a scale factor. Some use other letters, but really ultimately, uh, whatever letter is used for scale factor, you would kind of use for there. So two to four, we would use a two scale factor. And then notice here, one, two, three units long here, 
one, two, three more units here. So again, this is a scale factor of two as well. So we always want to make sure that we're using the same scale factor to move the points that are not on the center of dilation. So we would do that, and then we would get a new figure. Let's use, let's do a uh, pink figure here. So we would get a new figure, not using the dash line, of course. Uh, we would get a new figure, and it would look kind of like this. Okay, so we would have a figure here. By dilating it using a scale factor of two centered at point G, we would end up with that new figure right there. Okay, so that would be our last uh, step here. I'm just get my text box here. There we go. Dilate with center of dilation G using scale factor two uh, for points E, M, and L. Now remember that point L is on top of point G. So that won't move. Okay, so that's basically a sequence of uh, uh, transformations that would move this triangle on top of that triangle. And by doing that, we would demonstrate that these two figures are indeed similar because any figure that's similar to another can be rotated, reflected, translated, and or dilated to overlap each other. So that would do that. Now, another example I would like to show you here is using uh, uh, Khan Academy. Now, on Khan Academy, they have this widget for some questions that allows you to translate, rotate, reflect, uh, and dilate any figure to demonstrate similarity. So while, of course, this particular case, there's going to be quite a few answers that can uh, prove that these are similar uh, figures, it's still important to know how to use this widget. So here's an example of this question. Uh, we got pentagons A, B, C, D, E, and F, G, H, I, J similar. To answer, we're going to try to map the pentagons onto, the, onto top of each other. So in this case, this figure here, we're going to be rotating this blue figure, A, B, C, D, E, and try to get it to match up with this figure right here. So what I, th what I say is, well, first, this is bigger, right? So we know that there's going to be a dilation involved. So when we use this widget, it's always a little easier to kind of translate them so at least one point is in common. Uh, so I'll move this up here on top of point I first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rotation. Now, when I do a rotation, I need to have a center of rotation, and I'm going to make that point, again, the center of rotation. So then if I drag this point, I can move it on top of that. That would make my center. If I have it off of here and I try to rotate it, you see what happens is it tries to it'll rotate along that center. I want to move that center so it's over here. So I'll do, oops, uh, one more little squeak there. There we go. And then now if I try to rotate it, notice that it does move nicely. So now here, I've got this. Okay, so I'm not, yeah, so that's that's pretty close. And now if I'm going to try to dilate this, but you can look here and see, well, wait a minute, it might not be, right? Because this figure doesn't quite line up here. But just to prove it, let's dilate it. And let's make sure. So again, I move this, my center of dilation, and then I drag my circle, and I can try to get it to line up. But you see how there... This figure here doesn't quite line up with, like this. I was able to get these points to line up, these points to line up, but these, this point right here is not the same as that point here. So here, I would kind of say, well, I tried. I was able to map certain points, but this figure is just not the same. So to say it's not similar, we can check our answer, and it is indeed not similar. Okay, so demonstrating similarity using transformations is sort of a, uh, a key component here. There's no necessarily math involved to set, except for obviously describing rules. If we want to throw that descriptions in there, uh, but understand that if we can't dilate, rotate, reflect, or translate that figure onto another figure, uh, then they're not similar. And that's the conclusion that we make from this lesson. So uh, that's part one. And uh, stay tuned again for more. We're going to talk about uh, some quantifiable problems that we can go through. And then we will uh, go from there. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.